It just has said it's gone live. So hello everyone. Welcome to the stream. Hello. I get a lot everyone. of I get a lot of questions and I've received a lot of questions recently about FT8. Um, it seems to be uh, something that a lot of people understand, but there's still a couple of questions that well, you know, a couple of things that they're not quite sure about. So today in this stream we're going to be looking at FT8 frequently asked questions and the frequently asked questions are going to be asked by you in the chat today. So if you're in the chat fire off some ft8 questions while we're doing that we're going to try and make contact aren't we to on ft8 because yes. we've done that viewer before. participation is advised i'm currently on 10 meters calling cq on odd so i've got <clears throat> i've got my window open so this is 10 meters at the moment it's going pretty well like pretty much the whole of the united states is uh is covered so i'm not sure if i'll see you but i'll i'll keep an eye out for you and if not we can try another band um so yeah put your put your questions in the chat um if you're watching this after the fact then it's still interactive let us know in the comments what your questions are around ft8 so i get a lot of emails and things like that but i always check the comments in videos so if you have a question pop it below and uh we'll try and answer that so um what's the best radio us, for ft8 no. how much power do i need for ft8 what antenna do i need for ft8 what is the best power supply for ft8 what is ft8 all those kind right. of questions. What's WTFTA. that awesome software? What's what's that <laughs> awesome software you've got in the background? That kind of stuff. So um, yeah. I'll um, I'll go through and uh, I can see a couple coming through. Before we begin, though, we do need to thank Todd K R One W for becoming a new YouTube member. Thank you very much, Todd, for joining the channel. And. Uh, I really, really appreciate you um, joining and becoming a YouTube member. If you want to become a member, you can below. There's a link, uh, a join button if you want to join on Patreon as well. And while we uh, while we do that, we may as well um, run through some of the supporters of Ham Radio DX while we uh, while we wait for these questions to roll in and while TO keeps calling CQ. Now you've only got five watts, you say today. That's all I got. Give it so all. You're I running. Got, you're running QRP FT8. I am, which is um, not a requirement. It is a weak signal no. mode, not a low power mode. No, that that is actually a, a very good point. Uh, a lot of the questions that I get come in say, how much power should I run? You should run the amount of power required to make the contact. So it's almost like it's one of the you... test questions in the US. <laughs> it should be. It should be, it a, uh, it should be a, a, a question. Is it actually? It's not. I think it? so, yeah. Yeah, I think it is. Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I've, I haven't seen it. Is that in the technician it's, one or in, in the general it's pool? It's probably in the technician. I, I know that uh, you're working on your, your general right now. I am working on my general. I haven't seen it in the general pool. So that's what sort of... I don't, I don't remember it in the technician when I did it. So, um, yeah. Um, okay, so we've got a couple of... Okay, Todd says it's a technician question. So uh, there you go. Okay. It's I been a while. It's been, like, of, been like a year and a half, two years? Since, since I you got your tech? did my technician. Yeah, something like that. Two years, I think. Time flies, man. I know. I've made good use of it too. <laughs> um, all right. So we've got a couple questions rolling in. Keep them coming. So um, Colin in VK says, why doesn't everyone use split mode? You get a lot more contacts. So um, I suppose with... Uh, split mode, um, we're talking about, uh, are you talking about the split operation here? So turning it on to fake it, rig or none? Or are you talking about the, um, what's it, fox and hound mode in uh, FT8? Well, that's fox and hound would only like get you contacts well. with the fox. Yeah, yeah. I think he means this split operation here. So Yeah, um, I don't know how that would get you more contacts. I'm not arguing. I'm asking a legitimate question too. I I know what it does to the radio, but I don't know how it would get you any more contacts than any other method. Yeah, so to explain what um, split mode is, this adjusts the frequency of the radio on transmit to keep all of your transmissions within that FT8 window, that's correct, isn't it? So um, that 
keeps your look here we go someone <laughs> wm7c is uh, calling me no doubt someone nice. on the stream that's that's a call sign that i'm familiar with so um yeah split uh everyone should run split operation so um why is my radio not transmitting there we go um like i don't know the difference whether you do get a lot more contacts um i just run it because that's best practice but yeah um, if you're going to do that, make sure that you set your split operation file settings um, to. Well, I have fake it. I don't change the rig. The rig doesn't change. I just fake it. Yeah. So what my understanding is is that in in when you run split mode, like legitimate split, the old fashioned ham radio split, your VFO A is set to fourteen oh seven four for twenty meters, and then your VFO B is set to like fourteen oh seven three fifty or whatever. It's it's set to a different frequency, and when you transmit, you go over to VFO B, and it's supposed to move wherever you have chosen your signal to go out in your waterfall, to be in the center of your radio's passband on the way out is what my understanding is. Fake it, adjust VFO A to move the frequency using cat commands instead of switching over to, you know, normal split mode running VFO A and B. But I'm I'm curious to know why it on, would do both, you on, know, more on, contacts. On rig, um, on rig, uh, the problem with having that is that you do get the radio has like an extra click all the time with the relay. At least with cat control on the 7300, it clicks between VFO A and B. So that's why I've that's what I just removed. That's why I've got it set as fake it. I think what Colin might be saying there is is it might be more context because of um, uh, everyone will be transmitting in that passband rather than like out if your radio's off frequency or if your dial's off oh. or something like that. Potentially, I don't know. He dropped an extra comment here. Yes, split mode in rig. I see people who try answering me when one when on the same, same. frequency they take longer than once on split. Sometimes I move my TX frequency and it goes through. I don't know, that, Colin. That 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 could also be you could be transmitting on a uh, frequency that someone else is transmitting on and they're you know, you're being blocked out as well, potentially. So when you're looking on the waterfall here for spare, you know, slots to like I've been calling W WM seven C here for a while, but I probably need to move my um where I'm transmitting because Potentially, someone else that I can't even hear, I'm transmitting over the top of them, and that's why right. the other station's not hearing me and not responding. That's, I mean, that's that's one particular um, potential, sorry, potential reason why. Um, just a guess. Lionel is FT8 killing ham radio. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're divided on that uh, on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is killing ham radio. Grumpy old men are killing ham radio. <laughs> uh, Bob Dobbs, please explain. I'm going to stop um, transmitting there for a minute. Uh, please explain shortened FT8 QSOs when they are used and how to do them. Shortened QSOs. Uh, so, uh, well, a FT8 QSO is actually pretty short. Let me just get that comment out of the way and um, I'll just reshare my window so that it's a bit easier to see. Uh, window that one so you'll see the messages down here so when I click on a station say I click on um, I'll just double click on that one and I'll stop transmitting for a minute so I've double clicked on K2IW who's been calling CQ here and automatically pops all these standard messages in now the first thing that it's going to do <clears throat> which it's a little bit annoying. I, I'm sure that there's a way that you could stop this. But when you double click on CQ, it goes straight to the first message, which is I'm calling this station with my call sign and my grid square. Then if he answers me, he will send me a uh, signal report. And then what this does is this message, if you've got auto sequence ticked, it automatically jumps down to this message here, the third one in the list, which is R minus 17, which means, Roger, I've received your report. This is my report minus 17 to be back to him um, and then if he sends me an RR73 then it jumps down here to 73 and the contacts complete um, as for shortened messages um, I I think that's I think that's what you mean because these are the standard 
short messages that you yeah, send unless you can think cut of off TX another one. TX. So yeah. it'll knock off 15 seconds from your minute and 15 second QSO. So how do you enable that? Because I want to get rid of that. Double click on TX2. And now whenever you start a conversation with somebody, double click on any one of the CQs on the left and then you'll automatically respond to them with TX2 instead of TX1. No. There you go. Oh. It just responded with TX1. So okay, you're so double, double clicking click on... on TX1. I thought you did that. Oh, there, there we go. Now, now Yay, do it again. disabled. Cool. Thank you. I learned something today. So that then people are going to complain what? you're not sending your grid square. Ah, ah, okay. So cuz there's always now, one of those. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not it's not required though. So if you're calling CQ, <laughs> so notice if you're calling CQ, you're calling your grid square down here. So if you're calling, you're always going to be saying where your grid square is. If you're responding to somebody, you don't need to respond with your grid square. Um, I mean, you can, but it's not a requirement. The only requirement for the contact is the signal report exchange, and that's it. If you, so, if you really wanted to cheat, pick TX4 and then click <laughs> on a contact and autofill and just make that contact. It'll go one over straight to the log. It's <laughs> it's not a real contact, though. <laughs> no, no, it's not. That one you I will have the, the other end will be missing as well. So, um, okay, so thank you very much. And thank you, Tio. I learned that today. That's great. Without um, the grid square, you don't show up on PSK Reporter. I agree. And PSK Reporter is an awesome 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 utility i can't say awesome enough times about it if you don't show up on you don't show up on psk reporter it doesn't know where but, to put you on the map so it doesn't put you on the map so oh okay yes because other people don't know what your grid square is when you because you're not sending it yeah okay fair enough um cool all right so to run through that again double click on tx1 and that enables and disables it James, can a POTA be run Fox and Hound? Yes. Yes. Um, Fox and Hound mode, if you go... I'm not sure if this will show up, will it? Yes, it will. Get Fox and Hound up. mode yeah, can be uh, switched on by going to the settings and then advance and then special operating activity, tick that, and then you need to select whether you are the Fox or the Hound. Um, so the difference with this is that basically... Um, foxes all run on one frequency, which is, um, let me, uh, I think you need window. to pick the frequency. It's not, yeah, it's not do. the standard 14074 no. for 20 meters. No. So if you're going to be doing that, you don't want to do it on the standard FT8 frequencies. So if you, if I turn on, so say if I turn on Fox and I hit okay, well, there's my log. You pick your frequency um, and then you you call. Now, if you're a hound, you'll the program automatically adjusts. You'll see here, or you won't quite see it on the waterfall because there's too many stations. But you you will be low down here in the frequency waterfall, and all everyone chasing you will be up high, so that you're basically spaced away from everyone else. Um, a good example was 3Y0J at Bouvet Island. When you switched on to their operating frequency, there was like hundreds and hundreds of stations calling up high on the waterfall and there was like one or two lower down. Um, <laughs> there was one or two lower down because there were some pirates, but, um, but it was a lot easier to be able to know and find the station. So yes, you can run at Fox in the Hand. Yeah, and I would just recommend putting yourself on the POTA spotting page, which you're probably going to do anyway, or it's going to come up automatic if somebody else sees you. But, you know, you're doing something a little out of the norm for FT8, so you want to work every advantage you can. And Fox and Hound is one of those advantages you can run on POTA. You could respond to, I think it lets you respond to more than one contact at a time. Is that right? Or just uh, uh, yes, them up. Uh, yeah, no, so you can, you can respond um, on... On the time slots, you can have yeah multiple going on, which is handy because you know the amount of time that it takes to 
respond to one QSO, you'd get less and less stations in up to if four, you were like I'd a big Z expedition or something like that. Yeah. Um, okay, so LB0FI, Norwegian Ham. Is there any particular advantages of using WSJTX or JTDX? And in what settings would one be better than the other? I run WSJTX. Have you ever run JTDX? TO. Run JTDX once, I think, for a live stream just to to play with it. But my my go to has always been WSJTX for no reason other than I'm just too lazy. Mm. Um, JTDX I think has some other cool little things like um, I think it's the it mine shows mine shows on WSJTX the countries, but I think theirs goes a step further. Um, there's some other features I don't know, really know too much about JTDX, but I just keep using WSJTX. Some people say that it's, it's more sensitive, um, but I mean, like maybe. We, I mean, we're You're using the program. F- we're using the program from the <laughs> developer, so you know, um, unless they've found something else that the developers haven't, then yeah. WSJTX I, I improved. That's a new one, Mike. I'll have to try that. Uh, just going through the list for some more questions that are pop- popping up. <clears throat> so, Mike, around WSJTX improved. It's a combo. Oh, cool. I'll have to have a look at it sometime. Um, Jimbo, WSJTX for me always. Uh, Colin, again, uh, if you mentioned you mentioned if set to fake it, reload does not click on text on FT nine nine one A. It clicks if set to rig or fake it um sorry when i'm in a a relay it's an extra relay so obviously you're going to have the relay when you transmit which happens all the time but there's an extra relay on the vfo band which switches switches in at least on an ic 9700 on a 991 um not too sure i i had the 991 and i don't remember running split on it, so I I can't I can't answer that question. But I think you probably best to have a look through some um, configuration guides for the FT nine nine one and see what other people recommend to run. But I definitely run one of them. So either way, it, it's going to work. It's just going to use the other VFO if you set it to rig. So you can set it to fake it and that just adjusts the frequency in the software in the cat in the cat software when it's transmitting. So you can do that. Um, thank you for starring those questions for me, Tio. I just you. started watching. So sorry. Do I have to do anything special if I'm working FT8 as POTA? Do I need to identify as a POTA station somehow? You so don't there is a have station. to, but you can. No. There is a there is a station. Is it K seven C A R K seven K? Yeah, yeah. So K K C one C R K seven C. Yeah, I, I see them all the time. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, uh, K, I'm pretty sure it's K seven K. So he always um, identifies as uh, K seven K. Yeah, here we go. K seven K always uh, operates as uh, transmits as K seven. C-A-R, POTA, or CQ POTA. And then that way people know that he is operating POTA um, because, you know, I mean, you can't, you don't have to, as, you, as T.O. said, you don't have to identify that you're running POTA, but the fact that if you do say that you're running POTA, then you're probably more likely to get a lot more contacts because people are going to be like, oh, a POTA station, I better chase him and I better, you know, give him a contact. So... It's um, kind of like being a vegan CrossFitter firefighter type deal. You just have to tell the world that you're doing a POTA. <laughs> so how would how would somebody go about putting CQ POTA into their FT8? So um, that's a good question. Where would you – because you can change – you can't – can you change the standard messages? Let you me can, back. but that's all I do is I do TX6. I just go down there and stick POTA in there. Yeah. So um, – let me. I'm jumping between I'm lazy. windows here. Sorry, I'm jumping between windows. So down down the bottom where you've got CQ, you would put CQ POTA, like that. And then when you transmit, you would transmit um, CQ POTA. Now, <clears throat> I think that when you double click on a station, if you're responding to someone, oh no, it keeps it. So that's good. 
Maybe it's only when yeah. you close down WSJTX it'll get rid of that. So you should only <laughs> have to put it in once. Charles not a vegan. He's a ham. Huh. Um, cool. So, yes, Seeky Perda, Seeky Perda, Seeky Perda. Um, uh, Perda doesn't need a grid. So, yep. Don't need no Poda. stinking grid. Oh, yeah, sorry, true. So, we can take that out and do that. I just leave it in because I'm lazy. That's extra work to take the grid square pack out. True. Um, Ludon Fisher, you do not have to TX grid to show on PSK report. I just turned on my radio on WSJTX for the first time. It doesn't have it even transmit yet. It shows there me listening. That's what I thought when you mentioned it before because I thought that when you go into file settings and reporting and you enable your spotting, um, it should spot your own st um, station like details. If you've got your grid square up in here um, in the top, then it should report to PSK Reporter. Okay, um, so I just went in on mine and I removed my grid square from the settings. And now if we look at my TX6 is blank and if I hit generate standard messages, it won't generate. And then I'm going to go to PSK Reporter and see on 20 meters, which is where I'm listening now, what it shows for me. But you've and taken I show... your grid square out, right? Yeah. I've taken my grid square out. It shows stations that I am hearing because I haven't done any transmitting. Let me see if I can make a call and see what it says. So let me go back to my sharing. I'll I share think... out that. Because I think the original... I think the original question, I'll just, um, you just queue yours up and I'll show it here. I think the original question come about from was because when we disabled this first TX message, um, if we ran through like this and rather than, you know, if, if I never called CQ and I only responded to people, then I think what they were saying before was that if we did that, these stations would report that they were hearing me, but they wouldn't report my grid square because they couldn't hear it. Now, right. I've got my grid square though under file and settings, and I'm and I'm reporting to PSK Reporter. So, I would think that PSK Reporter is getting my grid square from there. <clears throat> the reason I say that is because with Whisper WSPR, when you run that, um, that also uploads to the Whisper Net website. Now, if you're only receiving as long as you've got the software running, it still puts your correct location on the map. So um, I was assuming that FT8 was the same with PSK Reporter. Yeah, so Mike, this is where I'm headed right now. I think that it will show who you're hearing, but not who hears you. So if we look at my mm. map, these are the stations that I'm currently hearing on my radio. And I just made some more... What about, more adjust, listens? what about if you adjust the um, the listen down to like can, rather than 15 minutes, can you switch that down? 15 is as low as it goes. Okay. No, that's all right. I was going to say and because now, it's probably still got your details from before. I need to find somebody who is... Yep. So now I'm responding to a CQ and it's just their call sign, my call sign, no grid square. And I'll let that go for a couple of overs and then we'll see. Yeah, Pac-Man. <laughs> and we'll see if it uh, shows up at all. Right now yeah, I'm see, waiting. Is, I think London is talking about what I, what I meant as well, saying that if your computer is online, PSK will get your grid from the WSJTX settings if you programmed it in yet. So, um, so I think that it's fine if you're not sending your grid all the time. You'll still you'll still appear on the map, and you'll still be shown as as what you're hearing. Um, actually, it's a bit of a comparison. So is that so? That's what you're hearing on twenty, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're hearing Europe as well. Yep, I am hearing all kinds of stuff. I have a good antenna. Oh look, what am I doing on what am I doing on ten meters at the moment? Because uh, this is if Morton was on, on I could uh, probably hear Morton. On twenty. This is what's happening. This is what's happening on six meters at the moment. Looks like there's a few stations uh, 
being heard in VK, so might have to try that out a little bit later on. So if I go to 10 meters and go here, this is what I am hearing. So I've got a lot of US and a lot of Japan at the moment. Alaska, South America, and mm -hmm. we're back to yours now. So, Yeah, so I have one contact that has heard me, but he's not... He's not a ham. <laughs> he's just he's just a listener that's oh. doing reporting. He's using Spark SDR on a Hermes Light radio. So he's not using the official WSJTX client, which is probably why I got spotted by him. But nobody else, mm. I don't show up at all. So I'm going to go back and put in my call sign and settings. Uh, my call sign, my grid square and settings, EN 35. Okay. What's a grid Mike square says, anyway? Mike says turn on uh, SNR on PSK reporter, signal to noise ratio. So that must be in the display options, I think. It is, yeah. Yeah. Um, the other question, uh, the other comment that Sean makes is I update the grid in my setting when I And it is checked, out. Mike. Yeah. Uh, update the grid in my settings when I put out will help others to find new grids if they need, helps to stand out if they are using colors. So let's talk about colors for a minute because that is another question that I get fairly regularly is how do you enable the colors? So in WSJTX, and again, it's probably different in JTDX, if you go, um, you'll see all the colors that pop up. So you've got green, you've got blue and all these, um, there's a couple of others I think further up. I had one, I had a pink one there somewhere. Probably scroll past it. Yeah, it's somewhere there. Anyway, file settings, colors, and this is where you can set what each one means. So, for instance, all of those light teal blues are just new call signs, so new calls, new CQ calls that I haven't worked before. Um, if it's an even lighter shade of blue, it's just a new call on the band, so I might have worked them before but I haven't worked them on this band um, green is just um, just a station calling CQ um, uh, then there's the yellow standard transmit messages but then you've got these other ones which you can turn on and off you can also um, uh, yes select which ones you want so I've got my call um, in message which is red new continent is in this like purple um, then this darker purple new DXCC so what Sean was saying before was that if he changes his um, uh, poda grid and he's ch and someone's chasing you know chasing grid squares you can tick this new grid and if I turn turn that on the next time this refreshes hopefully it'll show up all the new grid squares that I haven't worked before. There you go. So there's a couple. DM22, EM36, EM83. So that's uh, handy for your um, for your grid square working if you want to chase those. So that's how you switch on and off the colors. Now, if you want to change the color, if you right click, which is not showing, typical, let me... Streamyard does typical. Yeah. Streamyard does weird stuff. It doesn't While show you're getting, everything. And that's set up my map. Now that I put my grid square back in and I started, you know, transmitting again. I was transmitting the last time, but nobody was seeing it, and now I'm transmitting again and everybody's seeing me. So mm. nice And map. you've got your and you got your signal to noise that everyone's hearing you, which yeah, is Yeah, that was always on. There just wasn't anybody sweet. reporting because I didn't have the grid square. Which, that's pretty cool too. If you've got a directional antenna and you point it in a certain direction, you'll be able to view all of the signals that those stations are hearing you in that particular direction and then see if it's weaker off the back of the Yagi or something like that, you know? so Yeah, this is the modern-day HAMS uh, field strength meter. Yep. Uh, so just going back to what I was saying, so if you right-click, you've got the option to set your colors. 
here. So you've got foreground color, unset foreground color, background color, unset background color, reset all to default. So I can I can change change the the colors. So background color will I can adjust to whatever I want for that particular um, uh, decode highlight. So so very good. Um, whoops, you watching us? <clears throat> I am. That's your that's your screen share. Uh, so let's go back through who. Are, what else have we got? Um, apparently K five Wavi Y is on uh, FTE on Hamlet at the moment. I think we've done all of those questions. Uh, Colin, yes, good point. Says uh, grid tracker, which is what I've got running in the background, tells you out loud if it's a new DXCC or new state, and so on. Can be um, just receiving hear the message from grid tracker and go out to the room and give them a call. Um, yeah, and you set all that up in the in the voice or the announcement settings in grid tracker. I don't have that switched on because I got headphones, which I don't get it to announce. So I should do that though. That's pretty cool. You should. Now. I haven't seen you at all on 10, but you reckon you're on 20. So maybe I should... Uh, I reckon I'm on 20, 20 right now. Well, how would we best figure out what band to use today? Well, the way that I would do it is if it was right now, I'd go to PSK Reporter and I would go to look at Australia and the US and I'd say let's start at... Well, I know that it's daytime here. I know that 80 to 40 is not going to work too well. 20 maybe, so let's start at 20. 20 metres, show signals sent and received by the country of call sign and I put my call sign is because I want to know what my country is. FT8, I'd hit go and I'd draw all these lines and then what I'd do is I'd zoom in on roughly where you are and it looks like there isn't... There's somebody right there above the, right there above the Twin Cities. Yeah, so there's a couple. So that's a good indication. Let's go possible. to let's go to seventeen and do the same thing. So seventeen meters is a f less stations, so probably not. Fifteen. There's one there. Relatively close. Uh, Twelve. I'm just going through the list. You got to be careful with PSK reported though. If Whoa! You click, ooh, guess, it, guess it's twelve. If you click too many so times, it'll it'll lock you out because you're you're spamming them. Oh, let's eleven meters! Try. Did you see that? I did see eleven meters. Let's just That's try awesome. ten. Who runs FT eight on eleven meters? Now I need an uh, eleven meter FT eight radio. Let me try. I'll load that up in a minute. Well, look. So t it's it's either twelve or ten at the moment. Ten looks better. We could probably we could probably try twelve. We've tried ten, but we can try twelve. Let's right. just have a look at. For the sake of that, let's have a look at 11 meters. Hilarious. <laughs> Nothing. From, no well, one... take your country out. Just just make it everybody if you can. Oh, okay. Is there a way to do everybody? Uh, anyone, last option. Anyone. <laughs> no reception reports. No nice. one's running FT8 on, uh, on, on 11 meters. All right, so where are we Maybe going, we 12 should... or 10? <clears throat> let's go 12 let's go 12 all right 12 is it because i'm trying i'm not familiar on 27 megahertz is there a digital frequency that nice. you can use i don't know what channel it would be but i'm sure that it i mean you just pick one because if there is we should definitely get some people on 11 meters running fta that'd be hilarious if we can do that okay so let's try 12 Twenty-seven two six five. Twenty-seven two six five, eh? Oh. It's the eleven meter frequency. Yeah. We should we should do a we should do a CB stream one day and um, just um, transmit on on CB running FT eight. Right, I <coughs> am odd. Yeah, I know that, but on FT eight, what frequency you're on? Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Twelve twelve meters odd calling CQ. Robert says, I'll have to try FT8 someday. Yeah, do. 
It's good. Today is Sunday. It's, it's, it is a good indication of what the band's doing and if the band's open. You never get stuck um, in a rag chew with some OM talking about his gout. <laughs> well, the good the good thing is is um, no, I don't need to tune up. Um, oh, I'm transmitting. Oh, that's no good. Um, so FT eight. I've noticed lately there's been a lot more sideband stuff that's been happening, but FT8 activity still been pretty good. But at like, you know, I like to move to SSB when, or you know, if you're a CW man, move to CW. But I like to move to to voice modes when when allowable. I don't want to stick on stay on FT8 the whole time, but some people do. WWV Special Event Station is on 12 meters. All right, I am calling CQ and you are calling me and I'm not seeing you on my side. Mm. Well, I'm running, a, I'm running, so this is the difference in power. So you're running five watts and I'm running 100 watts. I should be able to hear you mm. if you're at 100 watts and, and band conditions are good. <laughs> that, James says the 706 will do 11 meters. Do you have to I, mod um, it to do that, James? Yeah, you would have to, I think. My uh, 7300 would need a, a mod to get that on 11 meters. Yeah. Somebody jumped into half of my frequency. Jerk. That's no good. And you're only going to hear half of my signal. You're going to get the dits and not the dahs. <laughs> oh, AE6JK responding to me. Well, let me. I'll change mine to CQ, seeing as you're working someone else. Well, it would be neat but, if there was a and and WSJTX. I don't think does this. I think the WSJTZ does. You can filter your left column because mm -hmm. all you can do in WSJTX is CQ only or everything. The I don't know if you can turn this off. It would be good as well. Is the auto scrolling? I think it should be that as soon as you, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, you turn off you turn off monitor though, and that turns off everything. As in, it turns off decoding. So if you mm -hmm. want to scroll up, you do have to turn it off. Otherwise, it just puts you right back down to the bottom again. Which it'd be nice if there was like a little checkbox stops stops auto scroll or something, and you could like go back because like there's that South American station there that I just found um, from previous. But yeah. I am stuck. So just like we've been streaming for about 37 minutes and I've, you know, been, we've moved between 10 and 12 meters. I've had over 700 individual received call signs. Like that's not, that's not how many have popped up here, like duplicates. That is individual call signs, over 700. That's amazing. Let me go back to 10. Speaking of which, only 107 of them are watching this stream. So uh, if you'd like to um, uh, put a like on this so that they can see it and see what they missed out on, then uh, please do. Um, now, I've gone back to 10 because I don't think we're going to do it on 12. I think we've probably got a high Let me show something real quick on my screen. So right now... I was calling CQ and AE6JK responded to my CQ and I responded back minus 19. He called, he responded back with Again, TX1 yep. and then I said TX2 and then he said TX1 and I said TX2 and, he, and we weren't advancing. So I went ahead and moved down to TX3 on my own and he didn't respond to that. So now I'm calling CQ again mm -hmm. and if he's still out there, what will happen is he'll my computer will start automatically sequencing back to him. So I'd have to turn off this call first or I'd have to switch to even instead to get away from him. But he's just gone, gone, which is why we weren't making a contact. So sometimes you have to do that. Yeah, so that, that's probably a couple of reasons. That might be because he doesn't have auto sequence ticked and he might be just, you know, in the shack and not notice that someone's calling him um, because if auto sequence was ticked and he did hear you then it would move on to the next um message that should be sent thanks james um so that's one reason the other reason he's probably just not hearing you and as you said you're running five watts oh so. and then they're also telling me and i didn't notice this at first his time is way off he's at 1.7 is the worst i saw him mm. so we're not going to make that's that a contact anyway 
Yeah, so everyone who's running um, FT8 needs to run some sort of time synchronization. Don't rely on the one in Windows. So I use this one, which is um, network time. You probably use, do you use Dimension 4 or something like that? Or So it's really interesting. Different? I have I am on Windows for the first time in 10 or 11 years. And this is the first time in 10 or 11 years that my clock has had issues. I, I'm not happy with Windows. <laughs> it's It's been having some problems. Mine doesn't want to show on the screen share. But anyway, I run um, network time, which basically goes to the internet every 10 minutes and just make sure that my time is, is synchronized. So you can see there in another 12 minutes, it's going to resynchronize again. And that just runs in the background. So I don't have to worry about the time because, <clears throat> yeah, if your timing's off, then you won't get decodes. Um, another question from Sean. Does odd even matter or will you see everyone no matter the setting? <clears throat> yes, it does matter. So And and no. If, yes and no. Yes, yeah. Yes and no. So <clears throat> on HF, everyone sort of just randomly transmits either odd or even depending on which one they want to do. So um, there isn't really any set particular... Um, time period. So, so what odd and even is is odd and even is the time period that you're transmitting. So, um, there's two cycles. There's there's an odd cycle and an even cycle, <clears throat> um, which is yeah associated with time. Now, if I scheduled a QSO with Steve, and I said, okay, I'm going to call you on FT8. If we were both calling on even, we won't hear each other because we're both transmitting at the same time. Um, that's not normally too much of an issue if you're just getting on the band and you're not particularly calling anyone. The time where it does is where you're on, say, another band such as a, a higher band, I think. There's sort of unofficial odd evens, um, like northern southern hemisphere, I think it is. Um, on, For instance, on six metres, I think a lot of stations are on odd um, yeah, from North America. So then when we call CQ, we should call CQ on even because we're not seeing stations all the time because six metres is not open very often. So what happens is that rather than it just being random, um, you want the highest chance that someone's going to be able to, to contact you or to decode you and you don't want to be right. transmitting at the same time. So it kind of does matter. But also doesn't matter on on the lower HF bands and and for mo yeah. most intents and purposes it doesn't really matter. No, if you're listening only, if you're not transmitting, you are hearing both even and odd. And then if you double click on somebody to start a conversation, then you are on the opposite of whatever they were on, and you'll stay yeah. there until you make a change. Um, yeah. So you know, just it, and like Hayden said, if you're trying to make a scheduled contact with somebody, like I told Hayden when he wanted to contact me, I'm on 12 meters, I'm on odd, I'm calling CQ, so he knows where to go and when to look. And if he wanted and to try and contact to me, he could click. Well. He could click even and then just transmit to me without even seeing me. Hmm. Um, just on a similar setting, which I use, and I notice you don't have it turned on. Hold TX frequency. So I've got that checked. Now, now what happens is when you double click on a station, if you don't have if you've got this unticked, let me show the uh, the waterfall. If you've got that unticked, what will happen is your little red marker here up at the waterfall, that will shift to wherever the station is that you're calling. So, for instance, if I responded, if I double clicked on this station, whoever it is in the program, it would then shift both my receive and my transmit frequencies to that same frequency. Now, that can sometimes be a bad thing because what will happen is, is if someone else, like as you can see, so this station here is called, look, there's someone else directly behind him on the exact same frequency calling. I've then got to compete against this guy and maybe a few other people who might also be transmitting on the same frequency at the same time. So what I do is <clears throat> I don't have hold frequency. I sorry, I have hold frequency ticked. And what that does is if I tick that checkbox, when I select my TX frequency here, it never changes. 
Now, that's not a problem because if you call a station, so if I, let me have a look. So I'm on 677 hertz. If I double click on this station here, I start calling him, but my frequency does not change, but my, my receive frequency does. Now, WSJTX is smart enough that it will still decode his end and he will see it here under his receive frequency window because this is this is programmed in to look for your look for your call sign and it will flash up and and it will show that someone is calling you no matter what it, they don't have to be on the same frequency as, as you so i would always recommend having hold tx frequency turned on purely because you can choose a slice of spectrum and if i go back to my waterfall you can choose somewhere on the waterfall that is free where you're not likely to get interfered with. So if I've let a couple of cycles go through here without transmitting, and I can see around about here somewhere, maybe there's not that many. Um, I might be able to maybe slot in here somewhere and choose a frequency. Oh, by the way, I'm holding control and clicking here on Windows to select my frequency. So that's just a little tip that helps to be able to increase your odds of working stations rather than doubling over them all the time so um yeah that's just a that's just a little little thing that i noticed at least on yours because you had to hold to ux frequency off and i had it on um yeah. jimbo a lot of operators don't have auto sequence enabled James just snagged Japan on 12. Nice. Nice. And then Alan's got a response to something I said earlier. TX without hearing the station is just QRM. Maybe. So there is a situation where I have done this a couple of times. I'll pick up, I'll go to a frequency that I work fairly frequently with a friend of mine, and I will just call out, hey, this is KM9G, KK6USY. Are you listening right now? You know, kind of like keying up on two meters on the repeater and making a call for the friend you know is also listening on the repeater. I'm making a directed contact. Um, if I if I knew that Hayden was in bed asleep when I did that, definitely QRM. But if Hayden and I are trying to make a contact, there's no reason why I can't call him directly. So it can be QRM just like anything else can be QRM or it could be a directed contact. So it's up to you. Mm. Um, <clears throat> Kevin... Can you chat with someone on FT8? Uh, you can, but it is very cumbersome because you need yes. to... Constantly edit remove... TX6. Yes, you have to constantly edit it. Um, you'd have to probably... You'd have to turn off auto sequence as well because once you finish the seven... If you if you were to make a contact, say, with the um, through the normal standard messages and then you get to the bottom and you stop transmitting, it'll stop transmitting and you'll have to yeah type in manually, which is a bit annoying. Sometimes you'll see in the waterfall, there'll be, ran uh, not the waterfall, sorry, in the band activity, there'll be random messages like thanks for contact or something or 7-3, uh, thanks next time or QSY or something like that. So, I mean, it doesn't really serve much purpose because it's hard to see unless you add your call sign and who you're talking to, um, it doesn't really serve a lot of purpose. Plus, there is a limit on how many characters you can actually put in there. If you want to chat with someone, then use something like JS8 call. Perhaps if there was some method of communication that used the FT8 protocol and some other portion <laughs> of the band that enabled you to keyboard to keyboard chat. Yeah, which is JSA calls the thing you're looking JSA for. JSA call. Yep. Yeah. So JSA, JSA call, call has a lot of chat. awesome features too. If you haven't played with JSA call, spend some time going down that rabbit hole because there is APRS over JSA call. And then there is also just pinging a station and seeing if they're alive or sending a message from me through another station to a destination. So store and forward, tons of amazing stuff that JSA call does. I'm not a pro at it. I just know a little bit about what it does. Yeah. So, uh, Todd, yes, talking about the timing. Even basically has the zeros at the end, zero thirty seconds, and odd is five and fifteen and forty five, with the five obviously being an odd number at the end. So um cool. Uh BLK Voodoo. JT sync allows you to sync to other people on FT eight. Um Crozet, for example, is one point six to one point nine seconds off. Yes, I mean I 
I could see how that would become handy, but like just fix the problem in the first place by making sure your time's correct. Because if you're if you're way out with your time, um, I mean, it helps if you have someone else who's out on their time and you want to really really want to work them. Right. But JT um, Sync will also synchronize yeah. your time with the FT8 network time. So if you don't have an internet connection, you can just listen to FT8 signals and then it'll sort of narrow your time work in it out close enough to get it done. So it's a, it's a cool little tool. Which sometimes happens if you are running, say you're running Poto or you're running somewhere remote and you don't have access to the internet, that's where it comes in handy because rather than having a GPS and getting timing and all that sort of stuff because your time might slip out and you don't have an internet connection to synchronize to, that's where it comes in handy. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Jimbo just talking about the east-west odd even thing. Yeah, I, th I thought it was north-south, northern-southern hemisphere but maybe not. So here's um, a good example on my screen that you're sharing right now. I am trying to make a contact with AD4ES. AD4ES responded to my CQ, and that bright orange stripe that you see on the waterfall display is his extremely powerful station, and I am not able to complete this contact. I need to use more power than the, the four point something watts. And then finally I got it after many, 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 many tries. Hmm. Hey, Bill. Um, Scott says erase click once to erase right pane double click erases left pane yep so <clears> erase <throat> once right pane's gone yep. double click left pane's gone and I got my left and right backwards but you knew what I meant yeah that's to clean up the the band it's, that's handy especially if you're changing bands because sometimes yep. you don't want all the stuff from one band to appear on on one side or the other <clears throat> um, who else have we got? Any other questions? Uh, comments? Just scrolling down, I'm a little bit behind. So Gary says, I use WSJTZ. I like the auto call and the auto CQ feature. Um, or criminal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I'll, I'll tell a little bit of a story where it is handy and it is also not handy. Um, Having the auto CQ feature can be a little bit annoying on bands where you know it's it's, a, it's if if you if you transmit over the top of other people, um, especially if you've got like a lot of hams nearby. So where I am located, um, there's a few hams that run six meters FT8 <clears throat> with the auto CQ all the time. There can be a lot of QRM on the band because they're securing all the time and there's like no one there to respond about 95% of the time. Um, whereas what I do is I just I just listen basically and I receive and I use ham alert to tell me that if my station hears someone, then I know I can go and start calling and calling CQ or calling them. Um, I mean, it is handy if you, you know, if you really want to work some DX and you know that the band's likely to be open at a certain time, but, you know, some people like auto CQ, other people don't. And, you know, you, you're leaving your radio unattended sometimes for a long time, just constantly transmitting and there's duty cycle issues and not that I've ever had an issue with my 7300. Duty but. cycle, yeah. Mm. So duty cycle, what, what does that mean? So duty cycle is what we talk about with how much time your radio spends transmitting. My FT-818, especially the FT-817 before it, had problems with overheating and burning out the finals. So I'm going to be sensitive to... Because it's such to, a small radio because it doesn't yeah. have a big heat sink, right? And no fans or anything inside. No. My IC705 is a larger radio and I can run FT-8 all day long on that radio and i can see on the temperature gauge that's built onto the screen it starts to get up a little bit warmer it starts to turn purple from blue like blue purple red it starts to turn purple so i can see that it's getting there and maybe i can take action but it's not red so i don't care i literally just stopped transmitting on the fd818 because it is hot and i put some space underneath of it to get some more airflow around it instead of having it sit on top of the the desk flat so you have to be sensitive to your radio's duty cycle. Any radio with a fan in it, especially a radio with a temperature gauge, you'll probably be okay. But, you know, check your owner's manual, see what the operating temperature specs are. The G90, for example, gets stupid hot, and I've got a fan with a temperature sensor on it. So 
And I actually have clocked that See, in I, at 110 I mean, run, degrees Fahrenheit. No, oh, that's cooking. That's crazy. Um, yeah. The se- the 7300, I've run pretty hard on FT8 before and just running 100 watts. And I've never seen the temperature gauge, at least the on screen temperature gauge, it's never got into the past the mid scale. So, because um, it is, you know, it, it, it can handle it, but as you say, other radios can't. Um, Gary, okay. So I use auto call more with priority on distance in the others tab. Okay. Uh, I haven't run WSJT nice. Z, whereas TO has. So I didn't know that yeah, was a feature. That's pretty cool. That's pretty Yeah. And, and Gary, cool. if, you, if you're new here, I don't recognize your name in the chat, um, which could be me. War Criminal is a joke that we have from the FT8 competition we used to do where we were running, you know, 1500 watts FT8 for an hour trying to make as many contacts as possible. And people were people were making fun of us. FT8 is a low power mode, is a weak signal mode, not a low oh, power mode. I said it nearly backwards. slipped up. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah it's, weak, just, a, it's an inside joke. Welcome mode. to the club. Yeah. Because the prime, the, like the prime example is, is like if you're, um, trying to do FT8 on 20 meters in the middle of the day and you've got well the waterfalls looking like we've got at the moment and there's stations everywhere. You probably don't need a whole lot of power. Um, 100 watts is not really a whole lot of power. Um, remember that the stations I'm hearing are not in my country. They're all overseas. So I probably want to be running a little bit more power to get to them. You got a lot of ocean between you and contacts. Well, yeah, I mean, like, you know, there's a few, there's a few around VK here, but I want to be getting, I want to be getting you guys, so I need to sort of increase my chances of that. I'm not. Uh, we can legally run 400 watts here in Australia, but I'm not going to be, you know, cranking out. Well, I don't have an amplifier for starters, but I'm not going to be cranking out 400 watts because I'm on 10 meters and I think, well, I can easily work someone with 50 watts or something so yeah i mean that's just that's just the way it goes and obviously on six meters if i'm running five watts i'm not going to be able to contact anyone i I need the i need the extra power so it's it all depends on what you need to run to get the contact colin talking about grid tracker fourth icon down on right hand side under map fourth icon down or, or right hand side under map filters oh, on grid on tracker. On the right hand side. So get off the left hand side. Go to the right hand side. Oh, there. there. You go. View spot. View spot reports. But that took everything else away. He's suggesting that you can use it at the same time. Oh. Is that supposed to load, like a Hamlet type thing? I guess I, I, you're asking the wrong person. I'm going to spend a day with Grid Tracker and see if I can work work as many grids as possible before I run out of power. There is so much stuff in Grid Tracker that is just like I have not explored. I just use it for the basic function, and even that's just like you know really, really powerful and good. Um, okay, we're coming up on on the hour, and we need we need to quit too because we've got other people that are streaming at the same time, so we don't want to step over them. Sean, just quickly, I check CQ only. Any reason to not uh, have it checked? So that's this that's setting. Normally, how I run over here. Um, do you want to explain quickly what that is while I queue up? Yeah. So if you look at the left hand side of Hayden's screen, you can see that there's blue, which is CQ calls, and then there's a bunch of white, which is people talking to not Hayden, people talking to each other, and he's just listening. And then there's green, which is another CQ call. If you click just CQ only, you'll only see the CQ calls and you won't see everybody else's conversation. So it kind of narrows the noise down a bit and helps you focus better. That's all. Yeah. Gary oh, says, Gary says I might need to. Clear. Yeah, I might need to upgrade it. Yeah, I'm running an older, older version. Yep. Hello, K Zero MRD. Uh, so yes, we're gonna sign off. So if you're if you're watching this later, let us know your questions in the comments for FT8, and we'll see if we can answer them. Hopefully, this has been helpful for you today. If it has been helpful, then please give it a thumbs up. Um, Randall says, "Yeah, it'll show PSK reporter spots." And we want to quickly say thank you to KK4 Pow Ham Radio Unleashed. Really appreciate you Unleashed. being here. Check Oops, out his YouTube channel one. also. 
That's all right. Here it's danceable. Here we go. Seventh row, everyone. Here we go. Here we go. Get out there. Get on FTA.